Any prayer requests as we go to the Lord? Unspoken? Okay. Unspoken, yes. Amen. The Lord knows it even though we don't speak it. So and that's a good thing. He does know. Praise the Lord. All right, let's all lift up our voice together. Heavenly Father, as we come before Thee and I, before Thy throne of grace, I thank Thee, Father, You're the only one that knows the secrets of the heart and the intents and the thoughts, Lord. And, Lord, I pray at this time, Lord, that You'd meet these needs, Lord, that whoever they have, Lord, the, between Thee and You, Lord, before, between them and You, Lord. And, and now, as we come in this service, Lord, I pray that You have Your way in every part. And, Lord, bless thy nation, Israel, I pray, in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. You can be seated at this time. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone out this morning. in the blue book 116, 116. Yeah. life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you have peace of mind like you've never known but then things change
can do 117 underneath. There are many of our name. Thank you. 
Did anyone have a number on their heart this morning? Number 10 in, in the blue book.
but for the blood shed on Calvary Street. But for the blood, there'd be no hope for you and me. For all my righteousness is filthy rags, and that's all I'd ever be. But Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven in the red book.
Leona, do you have a song this morning? Thank you, Lord. Down this road, I can see. Sorrow of this 
so long. So when that moment finally gets here, when I reach my journey's end, I'll be waiting. I have seen a lot of signs that have led me to this place, and I know I'm on the right way to that place to see His face. Yes, yeah. When I reach my journey's end, I'll be waiting at the gate for Him to open up and let me in. I have seen. Becky, do you have a song this morning? No? No pressure. It's good. Elijah, do you have a song? Thank you, Lord. And it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, and it falls to the lowest valley. Oh, the bond that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. Gives me 
and it gave them peace within. A prophet gave this promise that the Spirit Deep within 
That's lost in darkness for the saints who've gone astray for the sinner blind but searching the child in need of faith for the homeless and forsaken for the hungry and the cold for the prisoner and the captive for the young and for the old there is a remedy for every sin sick soul there is a cure for all for all your pain and hurt and wrong there is a solution for all your problems deep inside there is a remedy and his name is Jesus Christ. For the bitter, for the lonely, for the weary and afraid, for the burdened and frustrated, the discouraged and dismayed, for the mocked and persecuted, for the bad and for the wrong, for the scarred and for the wounded, for the weak and for the strong, there is a remedy. For every sin sick soul, there is a cure for all. For all your pain and hurt and wrong, there is a solution. For all your problems deep inside, there is a remedy, and His name is Jesus Christ. For every tribe and every nation, every color, every race, for every tongue and every language, for every time and every place, Oh, there's an answer to your questions. There is love for all the hate. And there's a healer for the dying. He's the life, the truth, the way. There is a remedy for every sin sick soul. There is a cure for all. For all your pain and hurt and wrong, there is a solution. For all your problems deep inside, there is a remedy. And His name is Jesus Christ. There is a remedy for every sin sick soul. There is a cure for all, for all your pain and hurt and wrong. There is a solution for all your problems deep inside. There is a remedy, 
and his name is Jesus Christ. There is a remedy for every sin sick soul. There is a cure for all, for all your pain and hurt and wrong. There is a solution for all your problems deep inside. There is a remedy, and his name is Jesus Christ. There is a remedy for every sin sick soul. There is a cure for all, for all, for all your pain and hurt and wrong. There is a solution. For all your problems deep inside, there is a remedy, and his name is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Uh, just thankful this morning that I know my Heavenly Father and I know there's been times through the years that just an old piece of flesh that failed them. And uh, He's still working on me and uh, recognize what needs to be done. And uh, He started something, He will finish it. Um, this past month, there's been a couple episodes that happened at work, and I kind of reflected back to a story from Stephen Cop. He, uh, they were away on a trip, on a cruise, and they were on an island. And out of the blue, a gentleman came and approached them immediately, and sense some kind of a spirit over Stephen. But the protocol had, his time was out, and he, he wished that he would have had time to spoke a little more with the gentleman, but he, up to this day, still doesn't know what kind of spirit that was on this fella that he recognized there was something different of Stephen. And in the day that we are standing in today, I really believe truly in my heart that will leave some kind of a testimony with someone. However, uh, probably about three weeks ago, a gentleman approached me on the job site. He said, I've seen you before. And I kind of thought and looked it over, and I've been on work sites since the early 80s, so it's been quite a few years. I said, yeah. And it was this one particular time that I seen this guy in Amherst and uh, he broke right up and poured his heart to me, and I don't know him. And uh, he had a really tough year. They had lost their daughter. His wife left them. And uh, something, there's something that draw him to me, and I know it's not out of the spirit that, that dwells in us. And since he's acknowledged me every, pretty much every day that he sees me on the job. He came and spoken to me a second time. And uh, about two weeks ago, I was sitting outside waiting for the security to unlock the building, 5.30 a.m. in the morning. And a motorhome came up the street here in St. John. And there was a lady. She stopped, and I thought, oh, she must be lost. So I went up spoke to her and once again 
this lady poured out her heart to me. They had given her a very short time to live, and she lives in uh, Calgary, originally from St. John, New Brunswick. Um, very rare disease that she had. And um, when she went to the clinic, there was nothing they could do. It just happened that the gentleman that formed this clinic is now 84 years old, happened to be there that day. And uh, he asked her what was her issues. And so he took... He took it over and examined her and actually found what she had and uh, gave her meds and here she was on her dying days. She, uh, She expressed to me that she gave all the glory to Jesus Christ that was not other than a miracle. She explained that she was born and raised Catholic, but she always believed that there was a living God. It just amazes me that when certain when these things happen, it's not by chance, and uh, it blessed her soul that I just told her. I said, "Yeah, I said it's real. There's still miracles. It is real." And uh, it was just a big glow in her eyes. It's five thirty in the morning, and she reached out to me. And, gave me a warm handshake and she said I thank you for the time you've given me I mean I could have just brushed her off and knowing she wasn't I thought she was lost but um, I'm just thankful that the Lord is uh, he's still working on me and and many others and and uh, I can see his work out there amen The old preacher man stood in the pulpit, the church house was empty almost. His eyes filled with tears, his mind filled with memories of not so long ago. Well, the church house was full, not one pew was empty, the altar was stained with saint and tears. And he stands there this morning and signs out the warning once again, let him let him know there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. Well, the way is still straight, there's a race to be run, and you can live had to glory. Must pay the cost, and the highway to heaven still goes by the cross. Some of the members thought he was old fashioned, unwilling to change with the times. So they found a new church with a more modern day preacher who was willing. Let things go by But the old chief But the old preacher stood by For what he believed in And what he had preached Forty years As he stand there this morning In an air empty church house His opening Remarks of these words There's a heaven to gain A hell to shout Oh, the way is still straight The race to be run And you can live as you please You must pay the cost And the highway to heaven Still goes by the cross The heaven to gain The way is still straight There's a race to be run And you can live as you please You must pay the cost 
in the highway to heaven. Still goes by the cross. You can live as you please. You must pay the cost. The highway to heaven. Still goes by the cross. Everybody's good. We'll turn the uh, service over to Brother Fred. If you want to change your positions and maybe stand. And... Well, praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome Mireille and the kids. And I'm a long way from the state of Washington, so that's as far as Vancouver, so praise the Lord. But uh, I'm glad there's no distance in the Lord Jesus Christ. God's everywhere. And Jesus, yes, he's sitting on the throne of grace, but he has access to the spirit of the Father that's in him, so... Heavenly Father, if we come before Thy throne of grace at this time, we thank You, Lord, that we can come before Thee. Lord, as we look into Your Word, Lord, that You would have Your way with this vessel of clay, as You would see fit. In that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray this morning. Amen and amen. You can be seated this morning. been on the road for uh, quite a while, and uh, some of us anyway, if you're my age, it's been a little while. And we're looking at things to be one day that what we see in the scripture that the Lord would come and bring it into fulfillment. Yes, we're looking at the perfection of the church. But we're also, as a parallel, we're looking at Israel being brought to her perfection in, in the land as well. And there's a parallel between what God does with Israel and he does with the church. There's been a lot of talk in the Middle East and it seems like from the leadership of Israel, they're getting fed up with everything that's taking place. Uh, things are going really nowhere in, in one sense, the Palestinians, how that they, uh, they look at, they bring in different devices to get at Israel over time, and you've heard how they use the kites and they put gas bombs on it and, or balloons, and then with the prevailing wind, that flies over to Israel, and then when the kite lets go, it ca catches houses on fire and things like that. Now, can you imagine if you were living, if that was happening to us here in Canada? Our enemy would be sending kites over, and you don't know if that night or that day you come home and you're, or you're sleeping and your house be burnt down, and you with it. 
So it wouldn't be a pleasant situation. So the, the enemy is always at Israel. And it's been in the last three little kind of scrimmages that they had. The mentality of Israel now is they're looking for that third war. The leadership is just not a question if it's going to happen, but now they're looking at it when. And God really has prepared the ground, if you want to, for the miraculous war to take place. Because when we look back some 20, 30 years ago, even before the Arab Spring, if Egypt would have continued building up her military, Syria wouldn't have won, gone through what it's gone through. If Iraq wouldn't have gone, it's gone through. Those nations would have some form, formidable weapons to go against Israel. But everything plays into the hands of God. Now, I know there's not much said about the Arab Spring, but the Arab Spring is the same thing that Europe went over after World War II, how to America protect it, her trying to get together. And it's way Satan's way of allowing America to get Europe to get ready. It looks sometimes like it's just going to fall apart. But just before it does fall apart, God can change the situation just like that. And so is it now from the 80s to year 2000, the territory of the head has pretty well been established. Yes, there's going to be some bickering and so forth, but now there's pressure that they more or less have to carry their own weight. Now, it's not that you want to toot the horn about Trump. Everybody knows about Trump. CNN is a soap opera for men, you know that, eh? Okay. But what it is causing by putting pressure on NATOs in those countries, it's causing Europe to get more and more that they have to be ready for something. They're not looking for the week of Daniel, but God allowing that pressure to take place. While that's been pushing it to its final role for the week of Daniel, this air spring of those Arabs, and what is the air spring? What caused it? What, why, why do we call it an air spring? It's, spring means the beginning. And in those Arab nations, if you're in the rulership and you have a great amount of money, life is great for you. Well, that's maybe the 5%, 1% of the population. I don't know what percentage. But the average person suffers. And if you think we got it bad here, you wouldn't want to be on the lower echelon in those Muslim countries. It got so bad by the year 2010 that one man in Libya burned himself in effigy because he was so despondent of what was taking place in the Middle East. This was really a signal that God allowed that to take place, that it's like a wildfire that just starts burning, and, go, and when a wildfire starts, it just don't burn locally, it burns right across. So across, as time would progress, all those Muslim states, in one form or another, got touched and got to the place where that there's been a great turnover or a change in the structure. Egypt's not the power that it used to be. Neither is Syria, neither is Iraq. And Saudi Arabia is the only one that, that down, not near the Jordan or near Israel, but down, down further down, they are going through some changes too now. Now with that new king, he's changing things around. And he's given women now a possibility of voting and driving cars. I seen a funny article about that's a right uh, magazine that put it up about how that they were allowing now men to uh, men allowing women to drive cars. So you see this car and the car is it's covered with a whole burqa, just the window looking out the windshield. Well, it's not that way. That was just somebody pleasanting with the, with things that taking place. But there is a change that's happening in all those Muslim countries. While the change is taking place, well, that's fine, Brother Fred, yes. Change don't come 
quickly. Sometimes it can come real quickly, but it's gradually over time because God sees that Middle East has to be put, changed over. So when the miracle war, the Ezekiel war ends, that those nations will be ready to accept the head of the beast, which will no longer be a Muslim dictated type of uh, countries. Now, what I want to get at this morning, and uh, get in two parts of the message, depending on how we go into it. Right now, Israel is facing a multi-front war that if it takes place. She's got Hamas. She's got Hezbollah. She's got your Palestinian Islamic Jihad. And you have Iran. They're all putting pressure against Israel. All wanting to destroy her. They hate her. They don't want her to exist. With that situation in the world right now, and the only remedy that Israel has, they have to go to war and clean up the whole mess. But before they go to war, God's going to initiate this thing, and He's going to change the landscape once and for all. But when He does, it's going to happen quickly. God's not going to take years and years once He launches Israel to take to you want know, to bring into place, into focus, to bring her in her full land, because we are now approaching that week of Daniel. And from the miracle war to the Ezekiel war, you have maybe about three years in between. And that that Ezekiel war, to you and I, that's when that seventh seal is broke. So if that miracle war is just up the road and not too far, and it does happen within a year or two, how much time do you and I have to be ready? Now, to being made ready, what does it really take to be ready? What does God require for you and me to be made ready? Oh, well, that's, that's accepting Jesus Christ and walking with the Lord, and, and if I get my life so straight and wrong, I'm ready. You're ready inside, but not the way he looks at it, because he wants you to be dressed with the revelated word on ground in this hour as well. And if you're not being dressed with that word, then you will not, I repeat, you will not be ready for the time when that seventh seal will be broke. As Israel is being pressed with her enemies on every side, wanting to destroy her, the spirit of Satan is doing the same in this hour in with the movement. The true child of God that sees the truth for this hour, not just in the days of Brother Branham, not just in the days of Brother Jackson, if we'd be living still in those days, those would be the requirement. And those requirements, yes, we bring along with us here. But if I just stay there, I will not be ready. It's pure and simple. I don't care how, how some of you may want to flavor it and color it. You, know, you can't live just in the past. We take the things as God has, but we're living in this hour now. And the bride is being coming to the place where she's, she's being opposed, not directly in your face, but what the things they do. Or the, you can tell that they're not in line with today's revelation because they never speak about it. They don't even want to look at it. Now, the reason I'm saying that is I had an email this week. Oh, before I go into that, concerning Israel. Abbas, Abbas, or uh, not the fish, Abbas. Okay, I just thought I'd play on the words there for a moment. He wants to cut complete ties with any negotiation with Israel anymore. 
He's promoting that to the Palestinian Council and the PLO Parliament. He wants to sever ties with Israel. Well, that shows his intent, doesn't it? They don't want to have nothing to do with Israel. And it's just like some of the movement today, they don't want to have nothing to do with the revelated word of God on ground in this hour. So I get an email. It's a brother from the States, not from the congregations, you know. He must be following the message somehow. So he sent me a link. He says, you better listen to this sermon. And he gave me the time frame that was on it because he must be picking up the truth. And I won't name the preacher for the name of the preacher. It's one that has been dealt with in the past. Anyway, he, in there, his whole sermon is built up on we have to rely on Jesus. Well, that that's goes without saying. I mean, what true child of God wouldn't want to do that? But he's bringing it about that man, that God's children have been so deceived by men rising up and being like dictators and he doesn't believe in apostles being in the leadership of the fivefold ministry I'd have to say now this certain mister had come to a certain convention a while back I have met him and he wanted to want to know if he could come back in well that's just it's not up to me it's up to the brethren but I says if you do well and you get away from what you're doing, then with time, like, like it happens in the book of Acts, you can, too can be accepted. It's almost like Cain in the, in the, in the book of in the, in Genesis. When God approached Abel and Cain, God had preference over Abel's sacrifice, but over Cain he did not. And Cain was displeased because he thought he was doing the right thing making a beautiful altar, doing things from an intellectual point of view. But he didn't catch the thought when God said, now if you do well, you too could be accepted. Now he had no excuse. Cain had no excuse to doing the right sacrifice. Because they were not babes when they were doing sacrifice. They had come of age, their generation, they were about ready to embark on their generation to move forward. And I'm sure both of them seen what Adam had to do over the course of, because it had been some 70 years, I think, before Abel became, was born. So you're looking at maybe 90 years down the road. Well, Cain should have seen what it, well, God was requiring. His father knew. But it's just like rebelling teenagers today. Well, Dad don't know anything. I've got a better idea. But that's not the point I want to get at is Cain... When God approached him, he says, if you do well, you would be accepted. And what does Cain do? And in order to rebel against God, he hated his brother and ended up killing him over time. So that shows the spirit of Satan or that intellectual believer. He is like that. Now, there's nobody who's going to take guns, I, I hope not anyway, in this hour, start shooting those that you don't like. But that's not what Satan is doing. Satan's using his influence to kill the revelated word in this hour, doing everything possible. But the true child of God, he hears the truth. And how do you know that you have the truth? Well, everybody says, I have the truth. You can go to any denomination or independent or whatnot. They all claim they have the truth. But it is the Holy Ghost that inside you, over time, if you don't panic, he'll show you that's not right. That's not right either. And if what they're preaching holds water and don't change, then that shows where the, the track of God is at. So God doesn't, his word don't change. No, it don't change. But sometimes tares will take an excuse. Well, he's changed the revelation. A revelation can grow. It did in Brother Branham. It did in Brother Jackson. And it will also in this hour. 
Because otherwise, if it don't grow, that means God's not going to show anything new. Right? It's just that simple. So, after looking at the spirit of it, it's just like Israel in the midst of those Palestinians, Hamas, and all those other groups wanting to get at her. And Satan and his servants are preaching things to get at the revelated word on ground in this hour. No, they don't attack things of old. Do you find the Pentecostal church is really getting into this message? Is the Branham movement doing it? Not here anyway. But in this last move. Because that's where Satan really wants to attack. He don't want the bride to move any place forward. So as there was just a convention that took place in the U.S. And I heard one servant, at least he got one thing right. He said, this bride's going to be put together by a bunch of men wanting to agree and thinking how this thing should go. God's going to have a leadership in it. And the minute you say leadership, the tares and intellectual wants to go against that. Well, there's a one-man show now. Really, when you start looking at it. And if God has his word on ground, should it not be among where the believer is at as well? Well, I remember in the days of Brother Jackson. When he... he he opened up the subject of uh, the three phases of the resurrection. Pretty near every assembly that was walking that had the Holy Ghost, it didn't take a year. If some had never heard it, I can see that. That would take a while. But the minute truth comes, the true child of God, he receives it immediately. Doesn't it say in Luke chapter 12? And Well, we could go there for a moment, I suppose. Verse 36. In Luke chapter 12. And ye yourself liken unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. And when he cometh and knocketh, that you may open unto him in your own leisure time. Why is it immediate? Because God likes an immediate response. If there's not an immediate... Now, when I say immediate, oh, you have to... The, the minute you heard it the first time. Not necessarily the first time, but somewhere depends on the subject that God has bringing on ground. It may take a few things for you to hear, to see the picture. But surely it's not going to take five, ten years. And it seems in this hour, the more seasons you've been in the message, they have a harder time to see it. It's the young people... It's the, newer gener it's the younger generation. They latch on to it right away. I, sometimes it boggles my mind. How can they see it so quickly? What's wrong with the picture? I mean, surely this has got to be something. And cheer up, brothers and sisters. Just like Israel doesn't really know what to do with all those Palestinians that are coming around and the Hamas and Hezbollah and, all, and Iran and all those countries trying to wipe her out. God's going to cause a miraculous war. God's going to intervene divinely in it. And the only way I can see that will arrest where believers may be in some assembly that may be caught up in these things that are negative, when the miracle war happens, the age of the miracle comes in, God's going to be with the true child of God that's been on ground, that's been up to date in the revelation of the hour then. And war is not a pleasant thing. How many know that? Now, there's a lot talking about peace and love in the hour they live in. That's Satan's major 
object of things to be brought to the people. But when I look at Luke chapter 12, if we go down to verse 49 now, I have come to set fire on the earth. Well, Jesus, now wait a minute. I thought you were a man of peace. What will I, if it be already kindled? It had already started in his day. Look what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and those that opposed Jesus in his hour. Or even in the apostle later on. He says, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how I am straightened to be till it be accomplished. Now watch. Now to you peace loving people. Yes, God gives you peace in your soul. He can give you love into the life of the person. Well, that don't mean the environment is going to be all rosy. That's in the movement in the world. Suppose that I am come to bring to give peace on the earth. Well, Lord, you should be working towards peace. I tell you, nay, but rather division. Boy, is that ever on ground in full bloom in this hour. There's every kind of a revelation of a group over here and a group over there. And then you'll hear some say, well, well, what makes you think you're different? If you have the Holy Ghost, that's what will make the difference. If you just have an intellectual understanding of the Scripture, you ain't going to see no difference. You're just hoping that things will all go and come together in time. God will make things work out for everybody. That's not what he's saying here in the Scripture. So is it a surprise that there should be division in the hour that we live in now? There will be division till the time of the seventh seal being broke. Mark my words. It's going to be division till that point of time. I go back to some of the basic things. Let's go look at basic things. Well, how am I going to be made ready? Well, first of all, if God has called you, as He brings you to the, to you the place of repentance, knowing that you can't save yourself, that you believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, not just for today and tomorrow. And the blood of Christ is there for your what? Your smoking, your cursing, your lying. For the unbelieving in His Word. And that blood is not just to cover you when you start. It's to, it's to work with you all through your whole life. It is to the place where it will work where it talks about in First John, if I walk in the light as He is in the light, that blood cleanses me. But if I refuse to walk in that light, that shows I really am not a believer. Because God doesn't, has not lost any. So if I'm not walking in the light, and what does it mean to walk in the light? The light of what He had when He walked on earth? Jesus has a whole lot more light than when He walked here on earth. He was instrumental in giving to the apostles more revelated word for their day. And granted from that hour, yes, truth has lost down till you hit 1963. But in 1963, once again, God starts speaking from heaven. Opening up some things that man never knew. And the reason they had to, time had to wait till 1963... Of the things that's contained in those seals, history had to be, had, man's time had to been gone through that there's enough history that everything is spoken in those seals, you could point back and see them. As God used a prophet to open that up. It's not the man. It's If God said that, concerning Elijah that he would send Elijah again, future to restore all things then Elijah which was the type of which John the Baptist was a type of he didn't restore everything and the disciples were worried in his day well John the Baptist didn't restore everything 
Yeah, but he says, Elijah shall come and restore everything. And that's concerning for us Gentiles. So there would be one somewhere that God will restore. Now, if he's going to restore everything, then of the things that he's going to restore and the things that the word speaks about have to exist. How many can know what's going to be in the future in a in hundred years from now? If we could, if the things that would exist, not that we have that time, but if things were existing and man would not be dealt with for another hundred years, think of the inventions that would take place. We wouldn't even have a concept of what they're talking about. I mean, getting back to the my parents' generation, they had a phone that you. Now, if I talk to that about the young people, what's that thing? Right? But then if I talk to my parents, hey, we got cell phone, we can talk anywhere, so we don't even need a cord. And you don't even have to hit the ringer. And it gets everybody's name there, and you can do a whole lot of things with it. Well, they say, well, well what? So things had to exist for God's word to be meaningful. All right? Yes, those seals were opened in 1963. And I there's a whole lot of things we could go through. But we've been dealing lately about three watches. If by now those that are claiming to be in the bride and having and walking with the bride that can't see there's three watches and we're in the third one, I'm sorry. Somewhere you have lost your hope, you don't lose the Holy Ghost, but something's gone awry somewhere. It's because there's an attitude. Because, and they don't, they won't show that attitude out when they're ministering or, or fellowshipping. Is they don't want to have nothing to do with it. And the more we can put that in the back burner the, and people show that we have the truth here, that more or less to the true child of God in this hour speaks volume they don't want what God has on ground in this hour. And the, the sad part is in Luke chapter 19 verse 13, yes, that talks about what the Lord's coming to deliver pounds. That's the same thing as the shout that started in 1963. God start now opening up more of his word that's already been written Understanding, because the time has arrived for things to be opened up. But when we get to verse 14, but it says his citizens hated him. And that citizens hating him did not just happen in the days of Brother Branham. Who hated Brother Branham? Was it the Catholic Church? No. No. It was your evangelical and your Pentecostal type of ch churches that was hated the things he stood for. Why did they hate him? Because he brought a word that pricked them. It sh they should have turned around and accepted what God was doing. It sure touched the Pentecostal church when he says, tongues is not an evidence of the Holy Ghost. Oh my. And getting back to salvation, which I just spoke just a minute ago, the blood of Christ is there for your and my unbelief. Jesus is our high priest, our advocate. That is, we do something wrong in the natural. He's our high priest. And the things that you and I have to battle daily... Because if we get to the place we're going to use sanctification that you've got to get so close to Jesus that you're not going to make a mistake, I'd have to say you're drifting to the eradication, eradication of the old man, that doctrine that was dealt with in the 30s. Maybe you've never heard of it. But their teaching, their teaching, if you want to, would get similar to some things I hear today. That's the most important part. You've got to get close to Jesus, love Jesus. Hey, the child of God does that automatically. But what's more important? When you and I came to the altar, 
depending what you had in your life. In a split second, smoking was gone, drinking was gone, cursing was gone. Now, depending on the different people, it went in different things. But God seems like He didn't do. We can't say, well, God, you didn't do a perfect job. You've got to get rid of everything. No, He left it there for your trials as you and I walk along with it. Because He wants to see our attitude. How are we going to deal with when we make these mistakes in the natural flesh side of things? Did not Paul say, I die daily? Any of you walking more better than the Apostle Paul did? Now, if he said he died daily, then there were things he had to, to crucify. Now, I don't mean, oh, well, we just, uh, we just let it go. And we'll, we'll just go along. No, we have to make an effort to clean up our lives. Yes. But holiness is not, di is, is the, it's not targeted towards how you clean up your life. Holiness, the essence of it, is dedication to the Word of God. When Jesus says, I sanctify myself, he had no sin and he didn't make no mistakes. But he did say he sanctified himself. In other words, he dedicated himself to the will of God, which is the word of God, which is the most important part, which God has a hard time for man to believe because they, he has a hard time to get man to believe his revelated word for his day. Now can you see that? That's the human side or the part that we are. But the bride has to put on something. Remember, the blood is imputed to you. You don't work for it. You don't buy for it. You don't put it on. It's imputed to you. It's given. Because what Jesus paid at Calvary. How many understand that part? Oh, I just rejoice that there. Because you can fall in their trap and... And, and, and cl not club people, but get them so, oh, I got to hear the preacher be telling me I got to clean my life and get it closer to Jesus. That's true, but it has to do with the dedication of loving Him. And if you want to get closer, it's not just moving the things in your life, it is getting closer to Jesus, it's getting closer where He's at with His revelated word in your day. Because if you're just back there, you are not close to Jesus. Are the Pentecostal closer to Jesus? Why? Some of them may live real better lives than you do. That, would that make them closer to Jesus than you and I? No, but because of the Word. They had a Word for their day, and God see them as close as they could when it was in their hour, when God moved in that realm. But God has brought a prophet. God, God brought an apostle. And you're living in a time of a five-fold ministry, brothers and sisters. You're not living in the days of the apostle or a prophet. You're living in this hour. Uh, to, to me, it makes it, it's not complicated. You can make it complicated. If I came here this morning, you know, you shouldn't buy raffle tickets. You've you got to watch what you say to your neighbor. How many don't? How many know that you shouldn't be doing those things anyway? And how many times do I have to hit you with it? Or how many times do I have to say, "God sent an apostle," "God sent a prophet"? Well, how many know what God is saying today? Here's the question. Jesus is not in his move from the days of a prophet, from an apostle. He's now moving and he's, he's looking at his bride in the fivefold ministry. All right. So, in... The three watches. One is on, the reason the three watches is because, well, where did you get that? It's in the Bible. Jesus said it himself. Because we were not too far from it in Luke chapter 12. In verse 38 he says, And if he shall come in a second watch, or a third watch, 
if he's coming the second t- second watch for you to get more ready on a personal note. That's not what he's talking about watching with that. That you should have been watching since your birth. But he's talking about something, information concerning his coming. And we are not in the first watch. We're not in the second one. We're in the third one, which is now in the time of that fivefold ministry. But during those three watches, because Luke chapter 19 deals with 1963 till the seventh seal is broke. And the citizens that hated him sent a message after him, we will not have this man to reign over us. Now it is expressed that way. You won't hear those words Express, but the attitude of preachers, believers, and first of all, his citizens hated him. Now that takes on a whole meaning right there. I remember when I first started, well, citizen, oh, that, that must be the country of Israel. He's talking about because Jesus time, Jesus was speaking about this. It is not that at all. Jesus came from a country. And what country when he returned in 63 in a message, what country was that? Greenland? Europe? No, from the spirit realm. Or the spiritual, the kingdom of God where the word is preached, that's where that kingdom is at. The kingdom of God is where the word is being given out. So now, if that country is there, then those that hear or in the midst of it are citizens of where the truth is being preached. It tells me these are citizens. They Now, to be the citizens of that country, the citizens in the days of the first watch was those that listened to Brother Brandon's message. Mm -hmm. And they were going to be tested. So when God removes the servant, then those that had been sitting in there as they were citizens of hearing the word, now that servant is gone because God now shows who's been hanging on flesh or intellect rather than the Holy Ghost. When that servant's off the scene, they couldn't recognize the next one. And now the citizens now, when we're in that second watch, are the citizens that is listening to the message of Brother Jackson, an apostle. As they're listening to that message, while they're growing up in it, those that are listening within it, there seems to be in harmony. Yet, from the Branham camp, they were not, because they spoke against. They're the ones saying those things that they hated to have that man to rule over us. It's not Brother Branham or Brother Jackson. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that's feeding that. That's who they're really speaking against. So now as those that sat under the apostle ministry were citizens, now we move into a third watch. It's not the citizens of the first watch that's going to be attacking in this hour. It's the citizen that was in the time of the apostle. Who's fighting against the word that's on ground now? Is it the Branham movement? There could be some, but I don't even know where they are, (laughs) if there is. They're mostly concerned in their own world now. But it's those that have been sitting under that apostolic ministry. They show that they don't want it to be ruled over them because they... They make sure no inference, nothing is brought or said about what God's doing in this hour. Oh, it sounds so good. I can hear something sound so good in the evangelical world, too. If you're just looking at that part where to be made ready is the focus is only on the inner man. God's focus is not just on the inner man. The focus, I mean, we ought to wake up. From 1963, the focus, the main focus should be 
Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. He that has the testimony of Jesus Christ, in others, it, that you know who Jesus Christ is, has the spirit of prophecy, because Jesus has been bringing prophecy on ground since 1963. But like mallard heads, you can speak the truth trying to warn people to get to the place that they ought to see their day. They get further backwards. They'll, they oppose it. Yes, it sounds like they may be opposing that servant. But it's one thing to oppose the servant. I think that, that can be easily forgive, forgiven. But if you're opposing what God's word is saying, it won't be forgiven. Didn't Jesus say, you can speak against me. That will be forgiven you. But if you speak again what God is speaking to me to give the, word, the fresh word on ground in your day, that won't be forgiven you. That's serious. So to set up standard and say, well, it's all false. They're all false apostles and all, there's all false of wild revelations out there. Yes, there is a lot of things out there. But the true child that has the Holy Ghost, he'll see it. We don't have to worry about him. He's not our worry. It is God's worry. He adds to the church as he sees fit. And none of you of us can make him lost or, or, or change position. So that salvation of the child of God that has the Holy Ghost, his salvation is secured. But he will see the truth for his hour. And if we say, we're, I'm following Jesus, are you following Jesus of, of 30, year 33 A.D.? 70 A.D.? 1963? 2005? Has Jesus... Now, when we say we're following Jesus, is Jesus traveling up there in heaven? Hey, I'm moving on. I, I, I'm taking a trip. We're going a little further on here. No, he's moving on in his revelated word. And that's what keeps the bride or the assembly alive. That I don't have to beat you over the head trying to get you to come to church. Because if I was feeding you crackers, you'd get hungry. Say, well, there's a steak somewhere else much better than this. But if you're hearing truth... It causes a hunger inside. Saying, Lord, I thank you, but I want more now. Uh, what, what can one say? Not too much, I guess, in this hour. So are we living in a time of peace? If that parable in Luke chapter 12 is speaking about that Luke chapter 12 points to the end time. And if Jesus said there's going to be division, I mean, you have to be blind as or like an ostrich having your head buried in the sand that you don't see anything. Why is there divisions? Because somebody does not have the Holy Ghost. Now you say that, are you condemning people and you're, 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 no, I'm not condemning their salvation of an individual. Because God can change, if a true child of God is caught in certain things, God can move him out. Didn't he move you out? Most of us, most of us came from the Catholic Church, didn't he move you out of there? Or the Baptist or Pentecostal Church? God moved you out of there. He can do that. He's more than able to do that. How did he get you to move? Because some preacher was preaching the heart and stamping down hard on you, on you? No. The truth hits your heart. And I'm going to be walking that way. They can walk where they want, but I'm walking that way, going on with the Lord. There was something else that I was going to bring in this morning. Concerning the voice of that archangel. There's a little bit more. But you're going to have to wait till next Sunday. Because if you overfeed the people to get stuff and they get, you know, 
Have you ever been in a place where you eat too much and then you're afterward you're you're ready to sleep, right? In finishing off, as I had started a little bit last week and I got a few minutes. When that angel brings forth and has a little book open in his hand, and John was told to take and eat it up. As Israel, in the days of Ezekiel, and that's like a forerunner or a preview of what's going to be happening in that seventh seal. And as I'm looking at it in Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 8, here's what he says. But thou, son of man, hear what I have to say unto thee. Be thou, be not thou rebellious. In other words, Ezekiel, don't you be re rebellious either. Light the rebellious house, open thy mouth, and eat that I give thee. If there was a rebellious house in the days of Ezekiel when God was ready to take his presence out, it's a parallel to this hour as well. Who is rebellious? Oh, well, yeah, we can say the Catholic Church, so the Pentecostal, the, the Baptist, and so forth. Yeah, that's, that's been dealt with. That's more or less been, God has exposed it. But what about the Brandon movement? And what about the movement in this hour? The house of Israel that's going to be spoken to is not to the days of the Pentecostal and the Baptist. It's going to be speaking about this hour. That is rebellious. Why are they rebelling? I've seen, you can see it in, even in, in, in the world. I've seen two person. Somehow, some words were said and they don't, it irked one another. And as you move on in time, one is going to never want to talk to the other one. And the other one says, I ain't going to be talking to him either. That's the kind of rebellion. Because they're rebelling on something they don't like, that they can't see. And either which one, nothing will happen till some sort of incident takes place if there is a chance for them to see alike. And this is the same thing that's taking place in this movement. Well, some will say, well, what gives you the authority to talk like that? Well, the same one that called me. If it's never said, do we just put it up there? Well, don't nobody talk about it. Don't ruffle the feathers. Nothing will get done because as Jesus says, it's going to be division and we're looking at a miraculous war and the miraculous war with the bride. I know nobody likes it, nobody wants it, but as God has allow, is allowing it, because it's His means of separating. You and I would want everything, we'd want tears and everything else to be all in the bride. God knows who's bride and who's not. And how do you think He's going to effect on the earth, especially now, there ain't another move after this fivefold ministry. Forget it, the seventh seal is broke. So it is the means in God's hands to allow division to take place. But in this division, it is a serious hour. If there's ever a time you and I needed the Holy Ghost, it's this hour. Know what you believe, know where you stand, and know the Spirit that's speaking to you. I'm not talking about the one that's preaching to you. I'm talking about that inner voice that's speaking in there. Because one way or the other, God's going to have His way. And in, in finishing off, 
In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1 to 7 says, I opened my mouth and caused, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels, and with this roll that I will give thee. Wow. Oh, Lord, you're going to give me something. Well, this is a type also about the bride receiving what's in that scroll. He says, I did eat, and it was sweet in my mouth. And I said, God was showing something. It's sweet. And he said unto me, Son of man, get thee unto this house of Israel, and speak every word unto them. Uh oh, that's the sour part. Yes, it's going to be glorious when that seventh seal is broke. When we see that, I mean, it's, it's only as there as, a, as a, an illustration, as that angel has that scroll open, you'll be able to see your name. You won't have to ask, well, am I saved? No, your name will be known. First of all, of what we've been seeing, how that angel comes on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ after the vision and the thunders, now he brings us into question concerning our rewards. And you'll know your name is there because he wouldn't be calling you to, to have a one-on-one -on -one interview. And I'm glad it's, the scripture says he has one foot on the earth and one foot on the sea. He's universal. Oh, do I have to go to Moncton? Do I have to go to Indiana? No, he will go where you are at. Where every child of God that's been a bride, been following the message, he will go there to you. After all, he can travel faster than we can. He's an angel. And that archangel. And sometimes some men would like to present... Well, that's Jesus in, in operating in through that angel or is, in that, is that angel. Then I have a problem when it's described that way. Because when we meet Jesus in the air, we don't meet that angel. With Jesus, we go to the wedding supper. This angel does not go to the wedding supper. I'm sorry. He's going to Israel. So if you believe that angel is Christ himself or in that angelic type of form or however you want to express it, then you better prepare your luggage to go to Israel after the rapture. I know it's maybe pleasanting, but this is the hour that we live in. In, no, I won't touch it now because it's too late. But I want to deal with that voice of that archangel. Just a little preview. He says, He cried with a loud voice. Seven thunders are going to utter their voices, but they don't cry as loud as that angel does. And if the seven thunders' voices are a message, because John told to don't write it, don't write it, so it's not just the shouting part. What is that voice of that archangel? It's louder than those seven. What can make it louder than those seven? And I'll stop there, and it'll cause you to go searching this week. It's good to be hungry. Are you still happy? And that's why in the hour we live in, when Jesus said, in Luke, it's the, in, in this time frame here, especially with Luke, he's talking about it's in this time frame here that there would be divisions. I know a human nature says, well, I don't want that. I don't like that. I feel uncomfortable with that. It's not your choice. He is using that to separate what is not bride in its final stages, all through those three watches. I mean, it's so simple. If you were God, how would you do it? Oh, I'm going to zap that one, I'm going to zap this one, and uh, I'll get a preacher to haul these other ones over here. It's a tool in the hands of the Lord. And so, yes, it's maybe not pleasant, but on the other side, 
if these things are taking place, you and I are getting closer than you think of coming to that seventh seal or that miraculous war. If Israel is at the place that inside now in the nation they feel, well, there's no other way, somewhere going to have to go a third war, a war again. And this time not just locally. That's me that's talking about, it's like a preamble, God setting up in, in the nation of Israel things for that miraculous war. We've been talking about it and, oh, everything, yeah, it's over there. But what do you think when it starts to happen? Do you think you're going to get a little bit more serious? Oh, we heard a sermon on Sunday was nice, and then during the week, well, mine goes blank, we're doing everything else, and then, oh, we're back here on Sunday. Well, that miracle war happens. Churches are starting to go to be fulfilled in the movement. All right. Well, who knew? When Brother Jackson passed away, I thought, wow, what are we going to do now? Well, it just showed how much we were depending on him rather than depending on the Holy Ghost. But now, are you not more comfortable with what God's doing? God had to take him home in order for the fivefold ministry to come to, to in fruition what it's going to be. Not all that came out of that movement are bride or the fivefold. But God now is allowing things to be said and done. Well, if you can see that and accept that and walk with God, He's going to show you more truth in His time frame when time moves along. The things that we've seen here since 2005. If you had asked me when Brother Jackson passed away, he says, no, that's, those things are not possible. But time had to be there. Things on ground had to exist. Well, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Seems like now I can go on for another hour, but I won't do that to you. I, I still remember what that professor told me. He says, if you go more than 20 minutes, it better be interesting. Because th you lose them after 20 minutes. Have I lost you a long time ago now? But it's true. If, it's, if there's a hunger, you're listening. That don't mean you have to believe every little word a preacher says. I could s make a mistake in quoting something, whatever the case may be. But listen to the Holy Spirit that's in you. When you see it in Scripture, wow, that makes the difference. Now let's just stand. Heavenly Father, I thank you once again, Lord, for what you've done for us in this hour. Bless my brothers and sisters, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this assembly, Lord, and how that we can, Lord, have peace in this country. But, Lord, our more concern is, Lord, that you keep leading us to the day, Lord, to be ready for thy coming. Now I commit this in your hands. In that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Can you see that? If someone still has a need, have the musician to come, and then uh, we'll dismiss.
When the Savior calls, I will answer. When He calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'm a pilgrim on a journey headed for a better land. The way it's rough, the trials so hard to understand. I call the one who started with me, said he'd be there till the end. And when I
come back next year? No, we can't wait that long. Are you happy? Praise the Lord. Let's just stand and look to the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Gary Richard to dismiss the word of prayer this morning. Bless each one.